It's now time for The Sit Down with Don Tony. The Sit Down, where Don Tony talks one on one with his followers. What are you looking at? About the world of pro wrestling, pop culture, and so much more. The Sit Down with Don Tony. And now, your host, Don Tony. Right, the real sit down. You best believe it. You best believe it. You know, I was looking at that intro a little closer. They used uh, some pretty good shirt selections of yours truly, but this is the only shirt that matters. Gifa, everybody. How you doing this weekend? Don Tony here. The sit down is back after a two week hiatus. I hope everybody had a nice weekend. Um, here starting to get a little crazy today, my mom and my fiance's mom met for the first time. We've been dating almost 10 years. They never met each other before they went and they picked out wedding dresses today. I heard everything went good. Me, if I look a little bit stiff, this was the mama jamma. I was telling you about it. it looks like a freaking tire it looks like a tire i started ddp yoga tonight i did it about three hours ago rocked this baby on my back and i am hurting like a mofo but i'll tell you if we can get through this show and this don't hurt well worth it well worth it you know look before i go any further uh who was it it was daniel daniel Never feel like you're doing something wrong if you only watch WWE. Um, that goes for anybody out there. No one is required to watch multiple companies. If WWE does it for you and you're content, that's you're right. There's nothing wrong with that. If AEW is all you watch, there's nothing wrong with that. Do not fall into this trap because I see it online. Um, we now have, what is it going to be, Tanahashi versus Moxley at uh, Forbidden Door? And someone wrote very politely, you know, I'm, that they were tuning in, but they didn't know either of the two guys that were in the tournament, well, before Tanahashi beat Goto. And you got to see all the rude replies. You know, shut the fuck up. This is Sinet. Open your eyes. And you know, I, you know, somebody reposted a clip the weekend of Double or Nothing when Tony Khan was discussing what he thinks is needed to expand AEW further. It's easy. You got the ingredients, my friend. You have the great chefs. You have the great ingredients you have the great meals the cooks the presentation is great but if you walk into that restaurant and a lot of people are rude and unless you, you, you the bad attitudes the pompous get that shit under control grow a set of but you know why he won't say anything online because he's afraid he's afraid of this gang mentality how dare he go against us? How dare he tell us that we're doing something wrong? So he'd rather make the bed and lay in bed with some very, very toxic people out there. And that's why he will never. Financially, he's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. AEW is here to stay. Let's not fool ourselves. And that's a good thing that they hear this today. But Tony Khan. Till he grows his set and starts to make that climate a little bit more enjoyable. You don't know what's going on. Fine. That's why I always said back in ECW, you know how nervous I was going to the ECW arena for the first time in 1995. First time I ever walked into the ECW arena. I think it was February of 1995. And I was nervous because new york philly you know they didn't get along all that great 
It's not just wrestling. The Mets, the Phillies, they despised each other. The Eagles, the Giants, they hated each other. The Rangers, the Flyers, they didn't like each other. We went in there, a bunch of us introduced us to a few other people, and pretty much, you know what everybody said? Hey, take your shoes off. The water's warm. Come hang out. Hey, we got a bunch of New Yorkers here. Hey, oh. Loved it. Met so many memories that no one could ever rip out. Make it more a pleasurable experience for everyone. For people that are not sold on AEW, don't make them feel like they're doing something wrong or guilty. <laughs> the Rangers lost. I know, I know. They're in the playoffs. Playoffs? I'm having coffee. I'm going to regret it. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. So, I'm here for all of you tonight. The sit down means we talk, we listen. Whatever is on your mind, post away. It could be wrestling, non wrestling related. Uh, shout out to Austin Nance, 17 months as a channel member. Jay Carlos, 16 months as a channel member. I can't believe we're doing it that long already. I mean, it feels like it's been about maybe like seven, eight months. I can't believe it's already over two years. Time flies, man. Time flies. So thank you to both of you. And thank you to everybody who is here. Chaos, uh, just spectacular man, kick-ass moderator, legend in the wrestling here in the Northeast. By the way, speaking of legends wrestling in Northeast, I talked to someone very, very close, Johnny Rods, uh, earlier today, DM exchange. He's doing good. He's doing good. Um, I don't want to get too deep as far as what he had done, but I'll say this. Just think about my dad. Pretty close. Pretty close. Um, he's doing good. So my prayers are with Johnny Rods, man. So um, Twix, we talked about Stephanie yesterday in great detail. She was not forced out from WWE. The MLW lawsuit had nothing to do with it. I suggest check out yesterday's episode. When I go like this, a link will pop up, a magical link. I got to remember timestamps once in a while because then I can't remember, like, where was I supposed to put the link? It's all bullshit, my friends. It's all bullshit. Sooner or later, you will realize the level of bullshit and you'll see people tweaking and changing and covering their tracks. I'm telling you. I'm not saying a bragging. I don't do clickbait stuff here. I don't put catchy titles. I don't put lies, you know, as front page to try to get you to tune in. You know, since 1997, you know, I don't want to be first. I want to be right. I just watched a clip today of Disco Inferno and Conan talking about journalism. And Disco Inferno played a clip of Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington his exact words were, now in this day and age, it's no longer about being right. It's about being first. And the weird thing is, is you, anybody that's an old school DTKC fan, friend, I hate using fans. You're a friend of the show going back 16, 17, 18 years. That was my catchphrase since 97. It only caught on online because we started doing shows online. That's been my catchphrase since 1997, almost 30 years ago. I don't want to be first. I want to be right. But everything that we talk about, sooner or later, when it does come to development that what we're saying is true, then you see everybody change their tune. Even our views on wrestling. How many shows you see today, today, talking about Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes WrestleMania. What show's been saying that for about two and a half months now? That it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with The Rock because of Cody Rhodes coming back. Now with the injury, didn't we say a week, week and a half ago, Cody Rhodes will be out likely to the Royal Rumble? Now they say in nine months, which almost guarantees he'll be back in time for the Royal Rumble, which is only, what, six months from now? And what do you do with The Rock? It's a pretty good situation to be in, if you think about it, if you're WWE. 
you know, but like I said, you know, I'd rather just be straight up with everybody here. And yeah, I lose a lot of viewers. You know, I look at that WrestleMania channel today, sad news about Batista, Paige going to AEW. Yeah, that could happen down the line. I clicked on it for the first time today to listen to the whole thing. I wanted to shoot myself, you know, with a BB gun. You know, I, I don't mean like literally. I, I wanted to just punch myself in the, in, the, in the ears. My ears were bleeding. I'm like 75,000 people click on that shit. You know how tempting it is to pull that shit? Not interested, man. WrestleMania is horrible. What? I, you know, I really, seriously, no one, I don't want you to feel pressure by this, but I, I ask you very, very sincerely to write it in the chat. You tune in afterwards, write it in the comment section. If any of you do subscribe to them or tune in to them on a regular basis, tell me why you continue to. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm curious. I mean, do people, you know, do it for the laughs? Do they actually think that some of what they're saying is true? But I'm just blown away. Like, how do you get hundreds of thousands of people to continually? I would think that if I take my time or my money, and I put it into something and they lie to me. They lie to me. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm like, that's it. I'm fucking out of here. No, thank you. I'm gone. But yet people just keep flocking back. It's weird, man. It's weird. All right. Your questions in the chat. All I ask is that you put big capital letters, the word question before your question, because it stands out a little bit better. Um, I know some of you like to chat with each other during the show. So if you do that and I'll spread it around really well, if needed, we'll open the phone lines in a little bit. Yes, we have some super chats that came in. And of course, they will always get a little bit of, well, they do get VIP treatment priority. We have two that we'll get into in a moment. One is kind of emotional for yours truly. So, all right. Michael Gonzalez is asking, do I think Damian Priest is a dark horse to win money in the bank? Honestly, no. Damian Priest... I really enjoy his work. Obviously, there's some bumps in the road. And he'll be fine. He'll be fine. But he is not being looked at right now as a viable contender for heavyweight championship. He's not going to walk around the briefcase teasing that he could beat Roman Reigns for that championship. Um, Damian Priest rarely holds any type of gold. So if anything, I could see him going to U.S. title, maybe tag team title, you know, have an extended run, build it that way. But right now I say no. Uh, next year is a whole different ballgame. But for this year, though, I think WWE is going to keep it more simple. You know, with the briefcase, I think it's going to be more of a predictable person. Uh, could be Bobby Lashley. We don't know the team yet. So I really can't tell you, you know, who. But um, I will tell you right now, I said it yesterday, I said it earlier uh, this week on Monday, and I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, unless something drastically changes my mind, Cody Rhodes, I think, is your favorite to win Royal Rumble. But money in the bank, you got to wait a little bit. I think Sheamus and Drew McIntyre will ultimately be in the Rumble, but neither one of them need that briefcase. So could Randy Orton end up in the money in the bank? I was thinking about that yesterday after we did the show. You know, because he is going to fight Roman down the line. Maybe Randy Orton does not want to wait until WrestleMania. Maybe he cashes in the briefcase at SummerSlam. So, my room is not smoking. Ah, I'm, I, I'm glad you saw that. No, this it's an air freshener. It's an air freshener. I used to have it back there, but I have some Adam Bomb memorabilia that I always keep on display. Huge, huge friend, uh, fan. I consider a friend. You know, not close, but I am a big fan of Brian Clark, Adam Baum. Uh, and I just thought that this, this scent for the air fresheners, it might like do something with the autograph. So, yeah, I put it on the speaker. So every so often this thing lets off mist. I, I was surprised that the smoke showed up on there. I have another one somewhere. I even have this little, I don't smell. 
I want to make that clear. But um, no, something about a nice scented room while you're doing a show, it relaxes you, it makes it pleasant. When I fart, then they really come into play. All right, Joe New, last night's NWA pay-per-view. Is this their lowest point? Zero buzz about it. Yeah, I think so. Something's up. Something's up, and I'll tell you why. Congratulations to Trevor Murdoch winning the NWA. In fact, I have to, uh, I want to get my synopsis, so I got to jot down little discussions, you know, topics that we talk about. You know, we talked about it yesterday. The turnout was horrendous. Horrendous. They had a very strong lineup. Definitely worked in 1999. Um, I watched today about half of it. I found my, my myself skimming through a lot of it, but Nick Aldis, something about his presence, prestige, you know, class. Nick Aldis still has a lot of value. And to me, ever since Nick Aldis dropped that title, NWA doesn't feel the same. And yes, you can't just keep it on one person. This is not Roman Reigns and WWE. But if there was ever a time to maybe give it back to Nick Aldis and try to get a little bit, you know, pop back into it, they give it to Trevor Murdoch. And I have nothing against Trevor Murdoch, but Trevor Murdoch, to me, is more of a regional champion than anything else. NWA, if you remember during, look, we're still in COVID, so I don't want to say you remember during COVID, but in the early stages of COVID, about a year, year and a half in, we pointed out that NWA might be the biggest uh, victim of this. I know you could say that about Ring of Honor, but the writing was on a wall for Ring of Honor for quite some time. But NWA had some momentum before COVID, and they chose to do nothing. And unfortunately, if you don't keep your name out there, if you don't keep some type of good presence, fans will move on. And I know what you're going to say. Well, it's COVID. You know, a lot of places had to shut down. I get it. But a lot of places did not shut down. You re you remember the Ring of Honor stuff? We're going to keep our wrestlers sequestered in a hotel room for three, four days. They can't be around anyone. They can't even answer the door for like Instacart or Grubhub. The fuck is that when you really think about it? Then you remember MLW? Weren't they the ones that said, oh, we're hiring this special doctor, trainer to court? It's very simple. It's a fucking catchy virus. You don't walk into a bar and go, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, chochawena, come on. Hey, hey, hey. You know, keep your distance. I never got COVID. Thank God. I know a lot of people that never got it. Sometimes freak things happen. I know a woman, I told you before, she never left the house. She's almost 500 pounds. She's embarrassed to leave her house. She's got one of those weird weight problems that her feet look like this big and her thighs are like this. You, you ever notice that? Like the thighs get like this big and the feet look like a little chiclet. And she never left the house. She thinks that somehow when she took her mail out in a mailbox, the postman had left right before and maybe the postman had COVID coughed in the air. Maybe we had some COVID with wings that was flying around and she caught COVID. Benjamin, I shouldn't laugh about that, man. When I was 365 and I still got, I still got weight to lose. Um, that's not fun. That's not fun. I feel bad for, for anybody that's in that situation. Well, we're supposed to have some fun on this show. So we don't, she don't take it personal. I guarantee you she's not tuning into the show. Sam got COVID. A lot of you got COVID. But, you know, what were we supposed to be like, oh, MLW, wow, very, very responsible. I'm going to watch tonight as a result. Nobody fucking cared. It just put out something. Put out effort. I just felt that Billy Corgan did not want to waste the money, the time, and the energy, energy unless it was e either gold mine or nothing. It's either full-blown or nothing. And unfortunately, that hurt him tremendously. You had a lot of wrestlers leave, from Thunder Rosa to Ricky Starks to Zicky Dice and several others. 
And they filled the gaps. Look, I said it yesterday. If I had a choice of watching NWA, uh, always ready. Well, not in 2020 or 2021, but always ready. Now, or Slammiversary, I would probably choose NWA because just for the wrestling content and the value. You know, it's, but they, yeah, yesterday might be near their low. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, we'll see what happens. All right, Run DMG, Hogan and Savage was a long feud. Was it the longest feud in wrestling history? No. Hogan and Savage was not as long of a feud as you think it is. It felt long, but it wasn't that long. WrestleMania 5, the mega powers explode. You know, they were teammates leading up to that. They didn't have that long of a feud. The, that's a good question. You know, that's an awesome question. Who do you all out there think ends the longest feud in wrestling history? Now, you got to choose two wrestlers. You can't choose a manager because then we could say Heenan, God rest his soul, and Hogan. But two wrestlers, longest feud in history. Sting Flair? Maybe years, maybe years, Sting Flair, Flair Hogan, Flair Hogan. I could think maybe Flair Hogan. That might be one of the longest feuds in history. Um, I wouldn't say Funk Lawler because they really, it didn't, it wasn't consistent. But uh, there's a few. Owens and Sami Zayn, I, I disagree. They've been very, very close friends. This has only been a couple of years, and they've been on different brands too. But you all choosing some good ones. Flair Dusty was long. Yeah, sure. Flair Dusty, absolutely. That's a good one. Undertaker and Kane, uh, I don't know. Brothers of Destruction, you know, they've been kind of alliances for a while. Freebirds and Von Erichs was a long feud. Unfortunately, tragedy is what caused that feud to end early. But that was a long feud. Look, Tommy Dreamer and Raven was a pretty long feud. I mean, it, you know, it got cut short when uh, Raven went to WCW. All right. Saying on a wrestling scene, somebody just mentioned something with managers. We got two super chats that have to do with managers. So I'm going to answer them now. Lascellis. Hey, DT, what's going on with Tully Blanchard? Your guess is as good as mine. The last time we saw Tully Blanchard, wasn't it Ring of Honor WrestleMania weekend? Didn't he start a new Tully Blanchard Enterprises at Ring of Honor? He, Brian Cage, Khan, not that one. And it was another person. I can't remember. To, Toa? 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 I think it might have been. We haven't seen anything since. Just think about that. You know, that's why I said, look, the Ring of Honor event that night was fun. I watched it. I thought it was very good. But, you know, until I see Ring of Honor doing shows and having a regular roster, every time I see this shit on TV, it's smoke and mirrors. It's smoke and mirrors. It, the promotion is dead right now. It's on hiatus. It's on hiatus. But keep in mind, we're already almost three months now since Tony Khan bought that promotion. We're about two and a half months. When is the updates? You know, just because Gresham has the championship and he wrestles in Bablastan, you know, doesn't mean that Ring of Honor is active right now. Ring of Honor is ceased. And we don't know how, when it's going to be uh, back as a promotion. But right now with Tully Blanchard, that's the last time that I saw him and we haven't seen him since my god look at brian cage we've been talking about that brian cage aew re-signed the motherfucker he says oh they apparently have something big for me brian cage very very smart to sign that deal even though the base pay is very very tiny brian cage is getting paid some money right now and he's like hey you know you don't want to call me no problem i keep working elsewhere so um I'm just writing down Tully and Cage, so I have for the synopsis later. For people who watch on the replay, you know, sit down is not, let's be honest, sit down is not a 
widely viewed show because unfortunately, you know, I know like Q and A's and fan questions and, you know, friends sending questions is not like what everybody must tune into. But I will tell you this, probably next week, we are going to start a mailbag with the email address and everything because, you know, we used to do that a long time ago. Every time I watch a Jim Cornette clip on YouTube, you know, you hear Brian Lest, John Muckamaga sent to corny drive through at gmail.com. He asks every single one. He can't just say, Mike Jones asks, this came in from corny drive through at AOL.com or gmail.com. You'll hear it 95 times during the show. This email came in from corny drive through at AOL. So, and I'm not knocking them, but we're going to do mailbags. So for everyone out there that wants to send in a good question in advance, we'll stack it up and we'll do a special mailbag episode. You know, we'll fit it in. We're not going to do it every week, but, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to do that next week. So you'll, you'll hear an announcement. And by the way, once again, if you're not aware of it yet, I am now a member of pro wrestling TV and, uh, they are very new. They're only about two months old, but, uh, it's been beautiful. The first five days have been incredible. It's amazing the response on that network. Um, I joked around with them. I said, soon, go, you know, what's hot category? I don't know if I have any pictures available. I didn't have any pictures loaded for tonight's show, but that what's hot category that they have, I honestly think before you know it, it's going to be filled with all of our shows. Do I have one? Yeah, I do have one available. Yeah, here, here's, here's a screenshot from their channel. See, the what's hot is all the way on the bottom. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, the video is there. So Blue Wire is audio only. Pro Wrestling TV is video. And uh, to Roberto, you know, nice try, my friend. Unfortunately, you're now shadow banned. But I, I'll acknowledge you anyway. Um, the, don't look at my YouTube numbers and say, oh, you don't get any views. You think I'd be getting these deals? If I didn't have people tuning into the shows, honestly, I'm not on YouTube to break the bank. All right. So a lot of people will ultimately not watch on YouTube, but instead watch over there. So, you know, you could, you could play that game. Anybody could play that game. All I know is that we got some pretty cool deals going on. And what do they got? What do they got? They got guts. They got guts. Tommy Dreamer gave Raven the infamous chair shot around the world. Greg from Brooklyn. Yeah, sure. I remember the cage. Raven handcuffed. His head had no way to go but down. And then Tommy Dreamer afterwards. That was that was crazy chair shot, man. I have never worn Air Jordans in my life, Rams fan. By the way, Rams fan, you won the um, YouTube predictions contest. Mike T won the Patreon predictions contest for Helm to Sell. So when I get the rest of your stuff shipped out tomorrow, um, you let me know how you want your 50 spot. So, all right. Rocky Red. Why do people conflate? This is good. Why do people conflate the Owen Hart belts, the trophies, the FTW title, and the Ring of Honor titles? as AEW having many, too many titles. Um, because they're on TV. Because Tony Khan has the Ring of Honor's titles defended. The AEW, uh, excuse me, the FTW championship apparently is not a recognized title, but it's defended with a referee. You know, I mean, we're not stupid. You know, these are all under Tony Khan's banner. And Tony Khan portrays them on the TV to make their wrestlers worth appear to be more. Adam Cole walking around with the Owen Hart title makes him look like a champion. When he's not walking around with that championship, everybody talks about, you know, how many rides in Disney World can he not compete? Because you have to be this high or this big or this wide to, to get on the ride. So it's all about the appearance. FTR. Carrying the Ring of Honor titles? Yeah, I'll throw one at you. Why the fuck are they not carrying the AEW titles? 
why not have the, well, Ring of Honor has a beautiful legacy. I agree with that. But there's no question, Ring of Honor is a secondary title. The fucking promotion is not even active right now. So to quiet, to quiet, are you figuring it out now? To quiet the wrestlers that fans complain never get AEW gold, they have gold now. They have everybody else's gold. Ricky Starks has got an FTW championship. FTR has Ring of Honor tag titles. Willa Utah, Utah Michinoku has got some pure title. So, oh, Adam Cole has got the Owen Hart championships. And now when they walk out there, everybody's like, oh, he's a champion. He's a champion. He looks like a champion. But at the end of the day, they're not champions for AEW. That's why you see Ruby so, oh my God, she's 76 and four. Then you realize 70 of those 80 matches are on YouTube. You know, let's be honest. Tony Khan plays a lot of smoke and mirrors and he's got his favorites and he tries to cover up the smoke and mirrors by doing different things. I'm not criticizing the man, but pay attention to it because that's what's going on. Um, now, I will say this, for everybody out there who asked me in the YouTube comment section all week, um, what are my thoughts on Adam Cole walking to the ring with the Owen Hart belt? He's not defending it. What are my thoughts of Britt Baker walking down the ring with the Owen Hart belt? She's not defending it. Doesn't it look stupid that they're walking down the ring with the belts? My answer to all of you is no. Doesn't look stupid at all. I know it's a championship belt and it should have been a trophy. We said it, we did a poll, and 80% of you said it should be a trophy, not a belt. We knew it was going to be a belt because the reports came out. That's why I did the poll because I wanted to know do you all feel it should be a belt or a trophy? But Owen Hart, when he was a Slammy Award winner, he walked down to the ring with pride, holding those Slammy Awards. He wasn't going to defend the Slammy Awards. Sure, it's just a trophy, but still, it was a pride factor. So to me, even though these titles are more to just make Adam Cole look like he's a champion, even though AEW has given him zero gold so far, um, I don't have any issue with them coming out with the belts. Not at all. Not at all. Um, Dragon Den. Which AEW female wrestler do I think will be their first megastar? Boy, I tell you, you know, I want to, sorry for the soda opening warning. I'm having a grape Zevia. All I have is grape. I hate grape, but it was cheap on Amazon. So I ordered a case. I got to drink grape, grape. Oh, my God, grape. When I was a kid, if you said to me, Anthony, you could have a choice of calves liver, Brussels sprouts, or grape soda, I probably would choose anything but grape soda. I hate grape soda. I got to go with Jade Cargill. Got to go with Jade Cargill, and she's got a long ways to go still. But Jade Cargill, even though she plays the ultimate bitch, on TV. She is genuinely a very good person. She's a good mom. She's a role model. Uh, she is working her ass off trying to put this all together. Only time repetition and matches are going to get that there. I think she's their first megastar. Thunder Rosa, you know, it's, it's weird because I think it's only a matter of time where people start saying, wow, unless you were homegrown from AEW, you don't get the push like other people do. That's why you hear in the press releases, Anna J, Red Velvet. You know, you, you hear names that really were not like big from other companies. Sure, they came from other places. Hell, I had people, you know, showing me like, oh, look, you know, Sasha Bet, you, you know, People think that she just, you know, came out of the uh, WWE developmental ground. But I say Jade Cargill. 
out of everybody. Thunder Rosa is my favorite. Thunder Rosa is extremely talented. But Thunder Rosa, you could see that, you know, something about her that Tony Khan does not put the focus on her. It could be simply because they want to keep it all on Jade Cargill and Britt Baker. But for me, Jade Cargill will be the first true megastar. Britt Baker has a lot, but I don't know if Britt Baker goes to the next level. You know, she was at one point over as a baby face. And she was doing a lot of heel shit that fans were a little confused, if you remember, not too long ago. I like Britt Baker, and Adam Cole deserves a hell of a lot of credit for helping Britt Baker get better as well. But I think Jay Cargill. Um, BJ's asking me, who, who's got the better peach? Mandy Rose, Akira Hogan? Boy, you're going to get me in trouble, but... We don't, we could be a little blunt here. We're not being perverts. Who's got the better ass? Just say it. The better ass. Kira Hogan or Mandy Rose? I got to go Kira Hogan. Kira Hogan, um, that's next level ass. So, yeah, Kira Hogan has got, you know, and look, she shows it off pretty obvious, but I got to go Kira Hogan. Got to be honest with you. Uh, don't forget this week, the watch party. I'm going to sh- reveal tomorrow two very, very awesome looking Shotzi Blackheart aut- autograph photos. And I know Shotzi Blackheart is not this gigantic megastar yet, but the photos are so cool. If you love horror films and you love Jason, you are going to love these photos. Stop by for the watch party this week just to try to get those photos. So you see, very, very cool. Um. All right, let's talk a little John Cena. Let's keep it going. Michael Gonzalez, with it being 20 years of John Cena, what was my favorite moment of his career? Boy, um, I got to, I'll be honest with you. I know some people may agree with me. Some people may get mad at me. My favorite moment of John Cena's career Hear me out on this one. By the way, do you get pissed on Twitter when someone will start something off and write, hear me out, and then they'll just post something that's just absolutely horrendously stupid? Hear me out, but they give no explanation. Just wait oh, <laughs> wait till tomorrow. Is it popculture.com? Oh, man, I'm going to have a field day on some dumb schmuck from, I think, popculture.com that posted online that, you know, what's the future of Sasha Banks and Naomi? And they actually write in the tweet that so-and-so is going to tell us. So I'm like, hmm, all right, this is going to be interesting. I watched it for three minutes. I wanted to stab my ears with a pen. The guy said nothing. He said, I can't play it tomorrow because I don't want to take a chance. I mean, obviously, I'm going to make fun of him. So, you know, just to be a scumbag, they might hit copyright on me. But I will definitely show you the screenshot and show you the link and you go watch it for yourself. The guy said nothing. The guy said nothing. He says that the reason why they're gone is because they've been silent. Fuck is, oh my God. Anyway, um, my favorite moment of seeing his career is when he got his ass destroyed by Brock Lesnar. I really mean that. And look, I never, ever thought I would be a big-time John Cena fan. I am now. Um, The man ultimately showed who he is. And he also, you know, with his open challenge, you know, he had some incredible matches with Kevin Owens, with Sami Zayn, with AJ Styles. The man was pulling moves out that we never saw him do before. The guy truly became one of my more enjoyable wrestlers to watch. I, I, it was, oh, listen, to this day, I am very, very honored. I don't remember the man's name, but you'll remember. 
there was somebody in the UK, very famous journalist, who was doing, uh, trying to get some John Cena memorabilia for some sick kid. And I happened to have an autographed jersey, photo, card, hat, shirt. And I sent it all. And a lot of you remember it is because when the guy got it, I sent him a DM. I'm like, hey, man, I just want to make sure you got it. Not only did he never thank me for it, but he never even said to me, yeah, I got it. I don't even know if it fucking went to the kid. I don't, I, I'm sure some of you remember the guy's name. But I became a big fan of Cena because of the time. And it's not time heals all wounds. You could see that Cena really was given back during those years. But I truthfully believe that because of how much WWE force-fed a Super Cena, force-fed Cena, where all of his promos, you know, you pay a ticket, you can chant whatever you want, let's go Cena, Cena sucks, and, this, and it was the same thing over and over again. One night stand. Give me, don't get me wrong. One night stand, him versus RVD is my favorite match of all time with John Cena. That, if Cena wins, we riot. And we're going to riot, but that's my favorite match. But my favorite moment is Cena getting his ass destroyed by Brock Lesnar because that felt like WWE saying, all right, we forced this motherfucker down your throats for so many years. We're going to give a lot of you what you've been wanting for years, and that is just an ass kicking. And he got his ass kicked, destroyed. Guess what? Didn't hurt his cred. Didn't hurt his career. Didn't hurt his legacy. Didn't hurt anything. He got destroyed that night, and it showed that, you know, he was willing to go with it. Ever since that moment, I started to like Cena. I love the Thugonomic stuff. Don't, don't get me wrong. The word life stuff was, was awesome, you know? But um, for me, match would be RVD, you know, one night stand. Moment would be Brock Lesnar. And I think that match with Brock Lesnar killing him literally was very, very important in seeing his career. Very important. So, all right, let's keep it going. Good, good topics tonight garth says wrestling journalists say that disney is good to buy wwe but they can't buy them because disney is losing a lot of money after the governor of florida signs the bill listen i'm going to disney for my honeymoon if it was up to me i wouldn't be going the amount of money that it costs to go to disney is nauseating. I have watched tons and tons of videos the last two weeks trying to understand these theme parks. I've never been to Disney. I don't want to go there and drop 10 G's and just sit in a hotel room the whole time. Plus, you know, my body is not in the greatest of shape. My ankle is shot from my car accident. I can't walk 20,000 steps a day. My point is, you look at how much money Disney charges for everything, they are making money. They are inventing money. They are in no financial disarray. I know the gay and LGBT topics with Disney is very, very con controversial, and I'm not in favor of Disney with that, but they are doing just fine. They are doing just fine. Um, but. I will say, again, again, when it comes to Stephanie, when it comes to anything corporate, when it comes to sales, if it's not being reported or discussed in the business world, I would not trust any wrestling. My favorite wrestler of all time is Terry Funk. If Terry Funk tomorrow said, hey, I'm now a writer. I am now a news reporter. He could report tomorrow. Disney's going to buy W. I still would say, Terry, you're full of shit. Funk you. You're full of shit. The business world. Remember when Vince got blown up in the limo? 
You remember that? We're approaching, I think, the anniversary of it, aren't we? Vince got blown up in the limo. The stock plummeted. WWE had to immediately issue a press release that it's storyline. Anything WWE does that could benefit or jeopardize the business, even a rumor, it will be reflected on the stock market. If Disney, there was, look, Disney could end up buying WWE. Look, I could come up here right now and say, hey, everybody, my sources tell me that Disney is seriously considering buying WWE. And tomorrow, say, hey, everybody, I heard Netflix is interested in buying WWE. And then for the next two weeks, I just find some entertainment outlet out there and just keep running every name possible. Then after two, three weeks, I named everybody. I named everybody except for Trump. And then two, three, four, five years from now, one of those 35 that I said buys WWE. See, I told you. I told you. If Disney was in strong considerations of buying WWE right now, the business world would be talking about it. I don't, look, I love Meltzer. I don't care if it's Meltzer. I don't care if it's Mike Johnson. I don't care if it's Wade Keller. I don't care if it's Brad Shepard. Oh, God, help me. I'd rather drink fucking battery acid than the follow any of that guy's shit. But I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is not part of the stock market of the business world, I'm going to say, no, nah, you know, I'm not so sure about that. Don't buy this stuff, man. Don't buy it. They keep coming up. Look, we should dedicate once a week a section on the show where I'll do exactly what these people will do. I'll find a wrestler on the roster. You know, WWE right now is very, very high on Liv Morgan. And then when Liv Morgan possibly gets a run for a women's championship, you're right. You can look on TV. You know, WWE's really high right now on Rhea Ripley. Then Rhea Ripley gets the shot at Money in the Bank. See, we were right. Maybe we should start doing that just for laughs. We'll start reporting like 10 minutes on a show of five minutes. We'll start throwing out some articles out there. And then somewhere in it, we won't reveal it, everyone. We'll just mention the word sausage somewhere in there. Sausage. Because that's how the sausage is made. So, hey, everyone, my sources tell me that WWE may lift the suspensions of Sasha Banks and Naomi. They're reviewing it this week. Sausage. 30 days is this week. When I said yesterday that with the 30 days being up, you're going to start seeing a little bit of talking on behalf of Naomi and Sasha Banks. That is legit. If I don't say sausage, then I'm telling you what I truly know. But we could turn around. If they're still suspended after this week, you know it's going to be at minimum another three, three and a half weeks. So we could say, oh, WWE is, the suspension is minimum 60 days, sausage. Then you'll see that's how people do it. So we got to mention sausage, sausage somewhere. Then you'll be like, oh, that's DT. Just don't buy the Stephanie stuff. Don't buy the Disney stuff. Don't buy any of that until you see it in the business world. Because believe me, if Disney, if Disney were to buy WWE, I think it would hurt WWE big time. I don't think Disney would just sit aside and let WWE continue to do what they were doing. I think the stock would plummet. I think the stock would plummet. So if Disney really was in serious contention to buy them right now, the stock would reflect it. But again, that's boring. So you won't see anybody say that. Mighty, mighty. What I think that Cena versus Theory being pushed for SummerSlam instead of WrestleMania. Well, if you remember about six weeks ago, I did a watch party contest. I gave away an autographed photo of Cena and an autographed photo of Theory. That was the rumored WrestleMania match of next year. If they push it up to SummerSlam, I'm fine with it. I'm absolutely fine with it. Uh, do I think we are going to get Cena versus Theory? It's possible, but I still think WrestleMania is the better picture. Because if you go with Cena Theory now, what's Cena's match at WrestleMania? Is Cena absolutely needed for SummerSlam? I don't know about that. Yes, Cody is out, but up until two months ago, Cody wasn't even on the roster. 
So up until two months ago, Cody wasn't even a part of WrestleMania. I have no problem if Cena takes on Theory now. But as I told you six weeks ago, Cena versus Theory was a match WWE plans on doing. But I heard WrestleMania. So maybe they speed it up to SummerSlam. And I'm sure it would be a fun match. The problem is Theory's a champion. Would they have Theory go over on Cena? I'm not that sure about that. And do I see Cena winning a championship again this quickly? So I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure. I mean, in two weeks, Cena will be back. So I expect Austin Theory to come out. This is my time. This is not your time. And maybe that leads to a confrontation. But I'm not sold yet on that. Oh, I would, I would love to see Gunther versus Cena. There's a lot of there's a lot of people personally. Like I said, you have cameo. You paid a wrestler a hundred dollars on cameo, and they cut a promo. I wish Gunther had like a physical cameo. You could pay Gunther, and he just goes up to someone you hate and just chops them once. Seriously, some people from my past. You give Gunther a hundred dollars. Hey, you do an autograph signing. You don't even know. I give invites to people. Hey. Want to go meet Gunther for free? Sure, no problem. They don't realize it's a setup. Hey, Don Tony gave me this free ticket to meet you. Gunther, you're one of my favorite wrestlers. Oh, thank you. Um, and it, just big chop. I know how to chop, but I don't, I don't know how to chop myself. Dinell. Good evening, Dinell. Who would be this new generation of the four horsemen in WWE and AEW? Um, in AEW, I would probably go with Punk, Danielson, Moxley. Punk, Danielson, Moxley, and pick. Pick whoever you want. I wouldn't go Hangman Page. I wouldn't put Kingston. Kingston would be like Sting. Just a heavier Sting. Kingston would be like your sting that would feud with those guys. Um, MJF, I would not put in a full horseman. I, I would never be able to see MJF go like this. I would see MJF go like this, but I don't see that. He, I can't see him being part of a foursome. MJF's got to be his own guy. Fourth person you could choose. Maybe you want to know something, seriously. I know some of you are going to hate this. Think about it. You give a little more time, a little more seasoning. I think if you saw Sammy Guevara, you see those suits he's wearing in Paris, Paris, he got engaged to Ty Conti. I think if Guevara started wearing those suits and he was around some of these other guys and I could see him being that cocky horseman. I, but, but you know what? No, 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 no. I take this back. FTR would have to be in it. They remind me too much of Arn and Tully. If I really had to choose it, I would probably go FTR. See, I don't know if I would put Punk as a horseman. I wouldn't put Punk as a horseman. I don't think he exudes that class. He's more of just the everyday guy, you know? So I don't think I would put him in there. I don't, it would be FTR, maybe Danielson. I think Guevara would be pretty interesting. Uh, sorry, Yuta, uh, Michinoku would not be in my plans, but you got a couple, you know what that proves? Nobody right now should be considered horsemen. You know, we got to come up with a new group. We got to come up with something new. I think you say the four pillars. I love the four pillars idea. You know, the four pillars is definitely, and I, and look, I thought what I said about MJF being the broken pillar was a great little Monica. I could see that on a shirt, the broken pillar of AEW. And you come up with like a, a four, you know, like the Pillman this logo when he was the rogue horseman. You know, someone could come up with a nice little logo that has four and something. That's money. That's money. Andrade is, I don't think anybody really looks on Andrade as an AEW guy. They'd look at him as somebody who AEW signed, and they really don't do much with him. Isn't it interesting that nobody mentioned Darby Allen not even once? Because I wouldn't even, I would not look at Darby Allen like that. Darby Allen, and not, no knock on him, 
no knock on him. But uh, you can't go, I don't think you could do an NWO reboot. You know, I still think that Tony Khan ultimately will be a character. He will turn heel. It's only a matter of time. He's not going to be able to resist. He, if he thinks it could be a controversial character and make money, he will do it. Um, but NWO, you know, you got to do something innovative. Remember, NWO was a storyline from Japan. You know, Outsiders, Paul and Nash. You could do an NWO storyline with any company as outsiders coming in. But you don't want to think NWO anymore. NWO was something in WCW. You know, it would not work in today's day and age because everybody knows that Turner and Bischoff and everybody was under the same banner. So the dirt sheets and the way things are discussed now, there would be so much, you know, and especially if you had journalists that hated WCW and the NWO, if that storyline came out now and they hated Bischoff, trust me, they would do everything they possibly can in their reports to rip it apart and diminish its importance. You know, oh, you know, if anybody that doesn't realize it, NWO is just the storyline. just it. And they will downplay it and diminish it. And then you get all the followers that will go along with it as well would not be able to have the momentum. So that's why you can't do something like that today. You know, even if Tony Khan suddenly became a character and New Japan was taking over AEW and Tony Khan says, look, I own the company. I could do whatever the fuck I want. I'll have New Japan over at the end of the day we know that tanahashi versus moxley is predetermined we already know that jay white versus whoever at forbidden door is predetermined you know we saw that infamous photo with jericho and mjf standing next to each other during them watching the re the the, re, the recorded first half of stadium stampede so it's very very difficult to do storylines like this today because people know how the sausage is made so that's why when we were talking about yesterday, what Matt Hardy said, that, you know, misinformation is the new kayfabe. That's true. And it is absolutely probably quoted a year. And nobody's going to talk about it because then they're going to criticize their favorite journalist. Misinformation is the new kayfabe. They'll report shit as real. And then when they get caught, Oh, at the time, this was said, and this was said, and this was reported. This was, and they'll cover their shit. They'll cover their shit because they know that there's nobody in the business world. If they're going along with it, they don't have to worry about Tony Khan going on Twitter and saying, you're a fucking liar. We had nothing to do with that. You're, don't be spreading misinformation. You know, Tony Khan is silent. These sites are silent because they think that, look, who was it this week? I don't remember who it was. Might have been, no, it wasn't Cornette. Can't remember who it was, but somebody legendary said that some of these journalists are doing this because they want to be part of the business and with AEW so bad. And it's not talking about Meltzer right now, that they are willing to go along with storyline and report misinformation because they know no one's going to call them out on their lie. And, you know, it's a little scary when you think about it because people will keep buying into it. So, All right. More questions. I watched a little bit of Jared on Broken Skull Sessions. Um, from what I saw so far, I'm very happy that Jeff Jarrett is in the place that he's in now. Physically, emotionally, you look at his arms. I mean, fucking guy is still pretty jacked. You never looked at Jared as jacked like that. For many, many years, I just hated Jeff Jarrett. A lot of my breakfast with Blossy intros was ripping him apart. I just did not like Jeff Jarrett. When he was going through the alcohol issues, remember that indie event? What was it in Canada? He was there for one match. He was in no condition. And you remember that infamous photo when he was in rehab 
and Karen took a picture of him in rehab. He was eating like under a tree with a paper plate. You remember that photo? And I felt so bad for him that day. I know his wife didn't mean anything bad by it. You'll be surprised how many people within wrestling, when I vented on that, how many people within wrestling had sent me emails or DMs, they're like, couldn't have said it any better. From that point forward, I really started to feel a lot of sympathy for Jeff Jarrett. And then I realized the man finally confronted his demons. And he's overcome those demons. It'll be a battle for the rest of his life. But I can honestly say that, you know, I am, I'm rooting for Jeff Jarrett. So I will ultimately watch the rest of it. You know, a lot of what they discussed early on is stuff, you know, pretty much new. You know, I, the, a lot of the controversy, a lot of, over the years, a lot of people thought, you know, there was big time tension with Jared and Austin because of like, the USWA days and everything. But all right. Just sports. DT, I like the McAfee theory rivalry, McAfee theory rivalry. Everyone loved it. Why isn't WWE continuing it? Because Pat McAfee is an announcer, he's a podcaster, and his wrestling should be very, very rare, sporadic. You don't want to expose. You don't want to expose it. He can hold his own. But when you don't see much of Pat McAfee, what you do see impresses the shit out of you. We saw what he did with Adam Cole. None of us expected. Then you saw what they did with war games and the guy, it's like, holy shit, you know, he would probably compete with Paul Heyman as maybe one of the most entertaining managers of today. But Pat McAfee, his roles where he's at right now are perfect. Uh, Pat McAfee against theory. They want to elevate theory. You don't elevate theory at the expense of Pat McAfee. You elevate theory at the expense of other wrestlers. So I don't think they should revisit that. Um, Pat McAfee, I'd love to see him back in the ring, and we will see him back in the ring. But right now, you know, what he's doing right now is, is fine. It's fine. Dinell, did I see Balls Mahoney from ECW on the news trying to get WWE... Um, Balls Mahoney is deceased. I think you're talking about Hugh Morris. Um, Hugh Morris trying to get Sonny kicked out of... Uh, trust me, you're not the first person that has made that full pot, so no big deal. But yes, I did see Hugh Morris on the news trying to, you know, start the buzz to get Sonny removed from the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, look... A lot of people still don't realize Hugh Morris lost his daughter to a drunk driver not too long ago, a few years back. So when he sees anybody behind the wheel drinking and driving, that just hits home in a way that 99% of us will never understand. That's why, like I said with Bret Hart, you know, when Bret Hart complains about Bill Goldberg to this day, I know there's a lot of you out there, Bret, just shut the fuck up, let it go. I can't criticize the man because he ate, slept, shit, bled, wrestling, loved wrestling his entire life, and it was taken away. If you were a baseball player, Somebody hit you in the head with a ball and you caught, your career was cut short and you never get to experience, you know, what you could have experienced and a lot of years were taken away and you get older and you can't even compete in old timers games. You can't do other things and you see other people excelling. And so that is something that tears at you that never goes away. So I can't criticize Brett because I don't know what that feels like to have what you love the most literally stripped away from you. So Bill DeMott, you know, losing his daughter to a drunk driver, I don't know what that feels like. So I've seen people, I've seen podcasters ripping 
build the mind for for not because of calling out Sonny, because obviously, you know, they're not say they're not in favor of Sonny. But Bill DeMont going on this crusade is what they're criticizing. Like, Bill, let it go. You know, no, he lost his daughter to a drunk driver. You know, so I would think, you know, he he, he probably has, uh, if anybody, more reason than anyone else to be on this crusade. I, I feel bad for him and his family. And uh, look, you know, I said it before. I defended Sonny for many years. Not that I defended her actions, but alcoholism is a disease. It's a sickness. You become chemically and emotionally dependent on it. But that does not give you the right or the excuse to get behind the wheel over and over and over and over and over again. And when you see that footage from December of last year, that the cops are telling her this you're gonna this tragedy is gonna happen. And she admits that she blacks out when she drinks too much. Yet she still gets behind the wheel. She dug her own grave this time. And the sad part about it is she, as much as a lot of people don't like her boyfriend, she brought down her boyfriend too. Because the boyfriend, from what you know, I have heard, and trust me, I've done a lot of research on this. The guy legitimately had no idea that she took the car that day. The guy was sleeping, and I'm not saying that he's any poster child or a good guy. I'm just saying, like, now this guy is dealing with some crazy shit because she got behind the wheel. So I, I feel bad for Sonny, but she's a grown woman. She's an adult, and... She did this to herself. This was totally preventable. And unfortunately, the only way you keep Sonny away from alcohol is in prison. And she'll probably be in prison. I'm telling you, I think she's going to go to jail 15 years. I think minimum 12 to 15 years. And unfortunately, that could end up being a death sentence. Because she's around 50. 15 years makes her 65 And all that abuse on your body, sooner or later, it could catch up to you, even if you run clean. You know, so sad situation, man. Somebody hacked into Sonny's OnlyFans. Yeah. I saw that she did like a special right before she got arrested. I wonder what happens with that, with the refund process. I don't know. Did you see that Mick Foley's daughter? Noel Foley now set up in OnlyFans. I'm curious. I mean, I would never set up. I first of all, I would never pay money for that. Number two, I don't want to get risk the chance of getting caught because my fiance uses my computer too. And I would not be surprised if she checks my search history once in a while to see. And am I browsing anything? I shouldn't be. Yeah, just for research. If any of you out there has ever subscribed to Noel Foley's OnlyFans, I'm curious. What do you think? I don't need any research or any photos. I'm not asking. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, like I think of Noel Foley. I think of when she was a kid, you know, because my old days of watching Cactus Jack. And now she's got an OnlyFans. I don't think she's doing anything nude. Nah, I don't think that. I'm not trying to put that thought in anybody's head. Um, No shit. Is Troy Donovan one of the members of D'Angelo's group? Don't tell. Holy shit, if that's true. Is Troy Donovan. Oh, my God. Tell me this is. That is scary amazing, if that's the case. Is Troy Donovan one of the guys in Tony D'Angelo? Yes, he is. He's the younger guy I said that just because you shave the sides, he looks like he's a star. Anybody that tunes into my shows on a weekly basis knows for the last month I have been saying that Troy Donovan, I don't see him lasting with Tony D'Angelo's group. I'm not bragging. I'm not saying because I'm Italian. Hey, how you doing? I'm not saying because I live in Howard Beach. I live two blocks away from John Gotti. His wife went to my wedding in 1999. True story. 
it, family members of John Gotti went to my wedding. True story. But you just, in the character, in the neighborhood, you just know when somebody looks like they fit. The other guy looks like a tiny, young version of Big Vito. But you could shave his head. You could put a wife beater shirt on him. You could put the, uh, a little hat on him. Troy Donovan did not look like he belonged in that group. And his wrestling, unfortunately, is not that good right now. His mic work was hard. That's why we predicted that Legato was going to lose that match because I just could not picture, you know, those guys acting, taking, uh, taking, um, you know, demands from Legato. It had to be the opposite. They sit back and Legato does all the acting. No shit. No shit. Troy Donovan was whacked. Joe knew. See, we can't put that in the synopsis because that might get flagged, like whacked. You know, yeah, wow. Wow. Like, dude, thank you. I didn't see that. He said he wrote that about a half hour. I, I did not see that. But uh, no shit. We does not surprise me at all, obviously. Troy Donovan. Now, what does this do with the storyline? What does this do? What do they do on NXT? Hey, you see, what, what was his name on there? Stax? Hey, you see Stax? You see Two Dimes? Hey, anybody heard from Two Dimes? What's going on? Legato, what did you do to Two Dimes? Hey, what did you do? Oh, uh, we didn't do nothing. What are you talking about? Troy Donovan, wow. You could see that. You could see that. He wasn't doing it. I'm sorry. Nothing against him personally. But like I said, just because you shaved the sides of the head, he didn't look like he fit into that. He looked like some Starbucks guy. Hey, put on his jacket and try to act like you're, first of all, he's not even Italian. Troy Donovan. Well, maybe he is. I don't think he is. Philip Maffey. He just heard someone got released recently. Tony D is not familiar with his work, but hopefully he might return eventually. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. He might be who we're talking about now with Troy Donovan. Um, by the way, I heard Tony D'Angelo may have gotten injured yesterday in a match with Cameron Grimes on the house show circuit. So I don't know, but I'm going to look into this a little further. I mean, I don't doubt that he was released. I want to find out why. I want to find out why. Let's see if it's how the sausage is made. The WWE just felt that he didn't he didn't fit in with the Tony D'Angelo group. Yeah, Tony D'Angelo might be injured. So Rockstar Wolf says Meltzer reported he might be brought back in a year. Yeah, and then they might bring back Killian Dane in a year. What, what does that mean? You know? I might get divorced in a year. I might be dead in a year. You know, WWE might have MJF in a year. What does that, what does that really mean? They might get him in a year. You know, like I said, that's sausage. From now on, when we talk about stuff like that, we'll just say that's sausage. That's how the sausage is. He might be brought back in a year. Yeah. I, I might get a sex change in a year. You know, I might quit grape, jo grape soda in a year. I may get a heart attack in a year. WWE may sign Britt Baker in a year. They might let go. I don't know. Um, Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci. They might let him go in a year. What does that even mean? Oh, we might bring you back in a year. Well, you might not. Not ragging on you, but you really think about that. Oh, they might bring him back in a year. Well, then again, they might not. What, what does that mean? Is that news? Oh, our sources tell us that WWE may bring him back in a year. Can't we say that about anybody who's been released? They might bring back Cross. They might not. Okay. Tony D'Angelo didn't get released. I released Tony D'Angelo. And I'm not saying that because of the Italian character. But then again, there's only room for one Don Tony. You know that already, everybody. Hey, WWE, I know some of your behind-the-scenes people check out the shows because you're very, very generous sending me autographed photos. 
to give away on the shows. You trust me when I say you send me bobbleheads, you send me focos, you send me other things. Send me two tickets for NXT September 12th and show me around. I'm going to bring a suit all the way to Florida just so I can dress nice. So if I get to have the opportunity to take a picture with the, the other white meat, the other Don Tony, you know, do I have to publicly ask? I emailed someone. Oh, yeah, we'll get back to you. I'm getting the AEW treatment. I don't want to be a pain in the ass and email them again, but no response at all. Yes, don't be a stunats. If you're enjoying the show, hit that like button. Hit that like button. The Don meets the Don. You know what I would equate that to? And I say this with nothing but love. That's if Jason Solomon's to met Orange Cassidy. How cool would that be? Could you imagine if we ever did a Zoom show and it's me, Tony D'Angelo, Jason Solomon's and Orange Cassidy? I think that would be pretty freaking cool, man. By the way, I got to thank Jason. Out of all the podcasters out there, as far as I know, he was the only one that wished me well on his show about the pro wrestling TV stuff. Everybody and their mother know, knows about what went down. And I'm not asking for anybody for plugs or support. If you notice on Twitter, I never say, hey, could you retweet this? Could you tell you to? I don't ever. But, you know, not one. He was the only person. I think uh, Joe did too. But out of those two, Nobody, nothing, nothing. So I know it must be doing something right. Dragon, Carlo Gambino or John Gotti? Who do I think was more powerful in the day? Look, as much as I obviously have, you know, a place for John Gotti, I, had, I met him a few times. You know, I was an honorary member of his fish club that one night that I've told that story 85,000 times over the years. I can honestly say, Carlo Gambino was probably more powerful. He was godfather, Don, much longer. Carlo Gambino is, you know, scary shit, man. I mean, John Gotti was scary shit as well, too. But Carlo Gambino, totally, totally different league. Man. If any of you out there, there's so many YouTube channels now. Oh, my God. You know what's funny? You all see all the wrestlers. You see all the Hall of Famers. You see all the old school wrestlers now that have YouTube chat, uh, that are on YouTube. You notice what they all have in common? They all have a co-host. And the co-host is nobody famous most of the time. Because none of these wrestlers know, like, what the fuck is a V-Mix? What's the Streamlabs? The fuck is the, 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 the Studio Vox? So what they do is, hey, hey, you want to be my co-host? Yeah, oh my God, it's an honor. I've been following you all my life. Well, that's why, you know, I, I appreciate that you appreciate me. So in, interpretation of the Hall of Famers, we need some sucker to do all the fucking work for us so I can sit back and talk about the, the yesteryears and someone else does all my fucking dirty work. But I'll be honest with you. If any Hall of Famers said to me, hey, DT, could you help me put shows on YouTube? I would do it in a second. You don't think I would do that for Terry Funk or some others? It would be an honor. Foley, any of them. I would probably kill my shows to do this. But, but here's the thing. In addition to all of the old school legends doing shows now, did you see all the people in the mob world that are doing it now? Sammy the Bull and Franchese and all these others. And they're all sitting there and they're talking about their mob days. Yeah, I remember this. Hey, how you doing here? And I, oh, yeah, remember the whole... And I, Oh, my God. They turned out to be the biggest rats. I'll be a rat for a super chat. It's crazy on YouTube. Yes, BJ, I mentioned it yesterday. Bret Hart managed FTR at an indie event. I wish it would have been advertised. The turnout was tiny. And you would think maybe they, this is Massachusetts, right? I think maybe they got him last minute. Very cool. but. That's something you advertise in advance. Oh, my God. May, you know what? Maybe Bret Hart agreed to go without it being advertised. 
CJ Rocks, have I been able to check out the offer series based on the making of the golf? I have not checked it out yet. I will definitely check it out. Um, so many of those films that, you know, I eventually will see, but no, that's definitely high on my list. I will definitely see that soon. So, all right. How are we going on time? All right. Looks like that we may be holding off calls till next week, which is fine. You know, we're still doing chat, all the questions, some amazing, awesome topics tonight. Great conversation. I like doing this because it gets the pulse of what you all want to talk about. See, see who's in the house. Much love, my friend. Seriously, I thank you, buddy. Joe Crone and everyone out there should go, well, you should already be supporting his stuff. But uh, I hope to have him back again very, very soon. Um, we have a really fun conversation. And, uh, you know, the most amazing thing about it is 25 years, I never had, like, guests on. Yes, I had calls, but, you know, Joe's, you know, it's different. We never had combos like on a show together and I, it sounded like we were doing shows for 10 years. So that, that was awesome. So thank you, Joe, as always. And you know, I, I don't even need to say it. You ask anybody who's live right now. I always make mention of you on the shows and not in a negative way either. So, but um, I like doing these shows with the sit down because it's the pulse of what you want to talk about. It's not about, you know, WWE heavy or AEW heavy or anti this or pro this. Maybe wrestling is not even a topic for some of you, but it gives me the pulse of what's on your mind, what topics you are thinking about. And I see the reactions online. I always want to feel like I'm talking to you, not talking at you. So, um, all right. So let's take a few more questions. Tomorrow night, we got a loaded show. We have Raw. Uh, the next step for Seth Rollins is going to be going down. What that is, we don't know. Um, we got to see what happens with Bobby Lashley as well. Those two. Um, Money in a Bank. Some additional matches are going to be added tomorrow. And we got to see. Hopefully, Edge is not on the show tomorrow. Hopefully, they keep him off for a week or two. AJ Styles, I expect to be back. And maybe we get a match at Money in the Bank. Uh, Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Edge and AJ Styles. I think that is very, very uh, high possibility. The only problem with Edge right now, and we've talked about this before, Edge has been a tremendous dick to the fans since he turned. Think about every promo that he has done since he turned heel. How do you apologize to the fans? You can't. You can't. Just because someone else is a bigger dick than you and fucks you over, you know, doesn't mean that you're, you know, you you apologize to the fans. A anyone thinking that Edge is going to apologize to the fan, I don't think that is very, very wise on WWE's part. You know, Edge was dark, judgment day, scumbag for the fans. You know, but he ended up meeting an even bigger scumbag in the end, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Rhea Ripley. They turned on him. You know, when you're a derelict, I'm not saying they did derelicts, but my point is if you're a derelict, if you're a criminal, and you are hanging out with other criminals, there's a good possibility that they may end up fucking you over because they're criminals too. Didn't we report that crazy story a couple of months ago that a rapist guy was attempting a sexual assault on a woman and another guy came to the rescue and the guy that came to the rescue, it's not a fake story. Just picture this. I got to say this the right way for YouTube standards. A guy attempted a sexual assault on a woman. Another guy stopped the assault. The guy that stopped the assault ended up being a sexual predator himself, and he committed sexual assault on the guy that was attempting sexual assault on the woman. How crazy is that? So Edge, bad analogy, but Edge getting it done to him 
from Judgment Day, you know, he's a man on his own desert island right now. And if I was AJ Styles, I wouldn't come to the aid of Edge. And what does Edge do? I think Edge might, they might have to do a storyline where he's at a crossroads where nobody comes to his aid. The fans don't come to his aid. The wrestlers don't come to their aid, to his aid. And we got to see where this goes. Or they may not even get that deep. And AJ will just pitch a match and we get the tag team match at Money in the Bank. So. Russ says it sounds like an SUV episode. I read that story. I thought it was like the onion. And then I actually saw the, the mug shots and saw the name. I'm like, oh, my God, it's a fucking true story. How bad a luck? I mean, look, it's a horrible story all across the board. But how bad of luck is that? That somebody stops you and they end up being worse than you. Oh. My coffee is cold and I forgot to charge it. See the red? I forgot to charge it. It's still better than grape soda. Mark is asking me which wrestler got me into wrestling and why. My grandmother got me into wrestling. My mother got me into wrestling. And I, I, I don't want to get into a whole deal, but I bet you a lot of you out there will say, yeah, that happened to me too. I was 10 years old. And I was staying, sleeping over my grandmother's house. She was babysitting me. And it was midnight. And I was in the other room watching some TV, laying in bed. And my grandmother was in her bedroom watching wrestling. I never watched wrestling before. All I heard was noise, the sound of the mat, Vince McMahon. And I walked into the other room and I said, Nanny, what's that? And she says, it's wrestling. So I watched it with her, and I'm seeing all these people beat each other up, and I'm like, wow, this is cool. So the next day, I went home, and my mom asked, like, hey, you know, what did you do? Where, you know, my grandmother cooked for us, me and my brother. And I mentioned to my mom, I said, yeah, and we watched wrestling last night. And my mother said to me, well, actually, she yelled at my grandmother first, and she said to me, she goes, I don't want you to watch that violence 10 years old the minute my mom told me she don't want me watching it i made sure that on saturday nights at midnight i turned my black and white tv on very 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 low and i would watch championship wrestling that's how i became a wrestling fan the wrestler that probably got me hooked back then oh boy um i don't know if there was any one wrestler because, you know, this is 1979, 1980. Backlund was the champion. You know, you had a, a, a ver various different set of opponents for him. Superstar Billy Graham was already gone, so if I remember correctly. So I, I, don't, I don't think it was any one person. It was just when my mom told me I couldn't watch it, that's when I watched it. So, and the rest is history. Benjamin says his mom hated wrestling my mother she's only heard of hulk hogan she has no idea my father hates that i do this stuff actually okay this is another super chat i forgot to mention earlier um and i see another one with a super chat train <laughs> yeah i i did that would that would be awesome my friend that would be awesome joe cronin yeah we're not we're not getting the train going the train is it stopped. It's been derailed, but that's okay. It stopped at the Joe Cronin station. Last last call, last station. Everybody out. But thank you, Joe, again for that. Thank you for that. Um, this one hits me a little bit. Ronnie, yo, DT, a local indie promotion here in the Boondocks mentioned me last night. Would I return to indie wrestling as an as a manager? Uh, I know Ronnie won a prize once and he is a New Yorker. I think you, he's in Long Island. So I know there's a couple of indie promotions in Long Island. I don't know which promotion in particular, but would I be an indie manager again? Yeah, I would. I would. Only under a couple of cir circumstances, though. Um, I do not want to take the place of anyone else 
who's trying to do this for their entire career. I'm old now and have other things that I have to do. I have a regular job. I can't give all that up. If it's local, Jersey, Connecticut, New York, you know, I don't think anybody's going to fly me to another state. But if I could do it once in a while and I'm not taking someone else's opportunity, yeah, I would definitely do it. Absolutely. So uh, I miss it. I really do miss it. And, um, you know, during the beginning of COVID, I had three different wrestling promotions reach out to me and said, you know, once we get through this COVID, would you consider managing again? I said, yeah. Never heard from any of them ever again. So, but Nero Faye, happy anniversary, brother. Third, 14 months, 14 months. But, um, yeah, I miss it. Not going to lie, I miss it. So, um, 100 Murder Man. He jumped on that train as well. Thank you very much for that, Murder Man. Uh, much love. Good night tonight. Fun conversations. Time flies when you're having fun. We're already at 90 freaking minutes tonight. 90 minutes. But, um, yeah, that kind of like threw me for a loop a little bit because I miss it. You know, I should, I should never have left. But unfortunately, the pain at the time was too severe. I had a little bit of a falling out with one of the promotions that I worked for. Um, for those that don't know the story, I was doing most of my work for VPW. At the time, Fat Frank, who you, if you ever heard of Jersey All Pro Wrestling, he had me working his school shows. And he said to me at the time, he goes, look, you get a little more seasoning. He says, I'll put you on Jersey All Pro. And unfortunately, he died. That kind of fucked things up. But um, I was doing most of my work for VPW. When we did that anniversary show where I was in the match and they used the mouse traps and we broke like glass and stuff, the Knights of Columbus was so angry at the match, they didn't want um, Jay Lover back. And I told the promotion, I said, if you're not going to keep Jay Lover on the shows, then I'm out of here too. And I left. And I was just so bitter between a lot of the hatred online and a lot of, I just stopped doing it. Next thing you know, a month turns into three months, six months, a year, two years, five years, and you realize you're not doing it anymore. So I should never, should never have uh, left it. But hey, who knows? Who knows? As long as there's hair dye, I still got the outfit. Who knows? I should have did more with Deli Man, though. Deli Man, I think, could have gone further. Deli Man was a good character. He had the salami. Yeah, the salami. Is it salami? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Yeah. My salami is still here. The salami is still here. It's big, and it still works. So... You can't bash somebody over the head with this. It would explode into like a million pieces. Don't mess with my salami. All right. Let's stop bringing this home, everybody, because uh, it is Sunday night. Tomorrow we have Raw, and uh, we'll be up here right after Raw doing what we do. And then don't forget, this Wednesday, I'm back again with Wednesday Night Dynamite. Thursday is the new Wednesday. So we're not doing Thursday shows for now. Instead, we're brought back Wednesday Night Dynamite, so we'll be up here right after AEW. You know, we're expecting Jericho to be bald. We'll see what happens. Ah, uh, all right. I never liked The Sopranos. I don't know why. I don't know why. You know what I think the reason is? When you grow up in this area, and you know people in real, and it's not a bragging. I'm just saying, when you know people in real life, and you see it being portrayed on TV, and they really like take it to a, a level that you know is not realistic in a lot of ways, you know we look at it more in a personal sense. And some of the Sopranos early on, I couldn't believe, you know. So that's why I never became a fan. I'm sure if I binge watched it, I probably would say, "Oh my God!" Well, that's what happened with me with Family Guy. A lot of people don't know this. You know, Family Guy, for the first, 
I think 12, 13 years of Family Guy, I never watched any. I might have watched one episode. I said, oh, I don't like this. After about 12, 13 years, one day I was sick and I was just watching things like they got Hulu and Family Guy was there. I watched a couple of episodes and I'm like, anybody knows my humor. I'm like, how the fuck did I never like watch this? I, I've, I've watched every episode since. So I became a massive fan of Family Guy. But um, Sopranos, I never got into it. Yeah, Aphrodite's Crush, we talked about Two Dimes release earlier. That's still blowing me away a little bit because I've been saying on this show for a month, he ain't going to last in the group. It's nothing against him personally. But take it, you know, it's weird, man. I'm not saying that we're influencing anything. But I've had a few people tell me behind the scenes, DT, they're watching your stuff. And some of the Don Tony stuff, the sit down and a few other things that we do, it seems like maybe they get a little idea here and there. I don't know. But, um, you know, we've all said, you know, you look at that storyline and the character, he just did not fit in. You know, all the only thing I saw about the guy is they shaved the sides of his head. I see people on Starbucks on Cross Bay Boulevard every day, people behind the counter. Would you like sugar in that coffee? No, I drink keto. You know, would, would you like a sweet and low? No, I drink keto. Would you like a Splenda? If I wanted a Splenda, I'd ask for a fucking Splenda. You know, he looks like a guy that works in Target. You know, would you like paper or plastic? Oh, I got to charge you a nickel. You know, they put the outfit on. He just didn't list. He didn't look. Sorry. But I expect now a, a storyline. You're going to see it on. Well, these shows are recorded. Remember that. These shows are recorded. Holy shit, I just realized it. Two Dimes is going to be on NXT this week, I believe. See, either this week, because they taped the next two weeks already. He's on that show. They're probably going to air it because it's pre-recorded. And they're not going to say a damn thing. I think what's going to happen is two weeks from now, when they do NXT live again, you're probably going to have Tony D'Angelo show up with Stax. And Tony D'Angelo is going to be like, hey, Stax, where's Two Dimes? I don't know. I called him up. He didn't answer his phone. Hey, Santos, what did you do with two dimes? Well, we didn't do nothing. And I think that's what they're going to do. He's going to sleep with the fishes. Or you know what? Maybe Tony D'Angelo gets a box. And may Was there any identifying factor for two dimes? You know what they'll do? Hey, WWE, you know what you could do? I'll bail you out. Hey, WWE. Pretend this is a jewelry box. Two weeks from now on NXT, Tony D'Angelo gets a surprise gift. Hey, you know what's going on? Hey, two dimes. You know, Stacks, you see two dimes? I don't know where he is. Hey, Legato, what's up with two dimes? I have no idea. Then all of a sudden, a gift box shows up at the arena. Now, we can't do anything disgusting and have a, a finger in the box. He opens up the box, and it's a pair of dimes. Two dimes. 20 cents. The fuck out of here. David, I have not checked Patreon this weekend yet, but I will be more than happy to look later on. I have not gotten any messages this weekend, but I hope you're doing well too, my friend. Um, Yeah, I think that's what will probably happen. Two dimes, it kind of makes sense. He opens up a box inside is two dimes, 20 cents. It's a little figurative. What happened with two dimes? Why am I getting a box of two dimes? Trust me, that's rated G. They'll do that. WWE, if you're listening, little jewelry box, 20 cents in it. He opens up the box. He's got a very, dis you know, like a, like a nauseating look on his face, like he saw a ghost. He puts the box down. He walks away. And then the goofy cameraman from NXT flashes the camera down on the box. And inside the box, there's two dimes. Tonight, I'm going to get a jewelry box with two dimes, and tomorrow, I'm going to show it. Do that, WWE. No, we don't need three dimes. All right. Sam, you actually want me to pick five AEW stars and five WWE stars and create a Survivor Series match right before we go off the air? All right, I'll do it. All right, AEW. Moxley, Danielson, Kingston. Darby Allen, Guevara. 
no MJF. Um, and I would have them take on. Uh, I wouldn't put Roman Reigns in there. Too high profile. This this would not be the top of the top. I'm not saying that Danielson and Moxley are not, but I don't think you put Roman Reigns in there. I think you put against them. You put um, Riddle, Sami Zayn. Uh, Riddle, Sami Zayn, Gunther, Gunther and Danielson. Come on, you tell me you wouldn't love to see that. I put Gunther in there. Gunther would not play well with friends, so I put Gunther in there. Um, I wouldn't put the Usos in there. Um, eh, I think that, well, you could put your pick after that. Uh, too bad, Cody. Well, you know, we're not doing it based on injuries. I put Cody Rhodes in there. I think that would be a fascinating dynamic that Cody Rhodes, who's now longer in AEW, is now on Team WWE Survivor Series. So you got to put Cody in there. So you have Cody, Riddle, Orton, AJ Styles, and one other. <laughs> um, it, instead of me meeting the, the other Don Tony, I'll meet Donald Duck. Yeah, I'm a quack, a quack. I used to impersonate Donald Duck too. Can't do it anymore. All right, so let's wrap this up. We'll be out of here in three minutes. We'll finish up in three minutes. Can't do the Aflac duck. Too loud. People are sleeping upstairs. We're ready. What, almost ten o'clock. Another day. Another day. We got to do an afternoon show. I know that everybody's at work. You saw the video of me doing the Aflac duck. Maybe I, do I have it handy? Maybe I have it handy. If I have it handy, I'll play it right now, but I don't think I have it handy. Do I have it handy? It should be easy for me to find it. I don't see, unfortunately, I don't have my shit titled the right way. Let me just type in Aflac, see if anything pops up. I think, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we may have it. I think we may have it. Wait a minute. Why is this playing? Okay. Hold on. I, I think I found it. I think I found it. All right. Well, let me see if I can finish this up here. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I found it. I found it. Okay. I found it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Open file location. I, I see what I was doing wrong. Okay. Where are you? Come on. You can't. I can't. This shit. Come on. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me one more second. I open file location. I don't see you. All right, well, do we have to sort it out by name. Hold on. We sort it out by name. That's good. So now we just, why is everything showing me wrong? Okay, here it is. Is this it? This is from last month. We got to go further back, and I think I found it. Nobody's disconnecting. Thank God. All right, I'm just going through numbers. I promise you, a couple of more seconds. I'm just going through the alphabet. Why do I not see it? All right, so you know what? View details. We'll do details instead. Now I'll be able to find it. Okay. Aflac, where are you? Last week, that's no good. Early, to, I hate when they organize shit like this. Last month, just give me lifetime. The fuck is this? All right, here we go. I found the menu. All right. Affleck. I can't. Why is this not showing up? Okay. Is this it here? I think we finally found it. I promise you I'm not bullshitting you. I think we finally found Yes, I found it. Okay, I found it. Let me move this here. Oh, no, it's Affleck short. Okay, we found it. All right. So just one time. Uh come on. Hang on a second. I sh see I didn't have this prepared, but we'll have it here. Okay, I got it. Here we go. Hopefully the dimensions are all right. 
Sometimes these dimensions are off, but here you go. I figured, why am I going to sit like a goof cough and uh, do the duck again? I'll do it with a little music in the background. I won't wear the mask. And I don't know why you people are requesting this, but here you go. Are you happy now? All right, we got to disconnect that music. Not because it's bad, but because I don't want to trademark. Yeah. So there you go. Yep. I used to be able to do the Affleck duck. You could do it in my car. That was my black Lincoln, though. All right. So let me jet out of here. Um, all right. One last question. When AEW brings in the trios titles, who should be the first trios champions? Either the elite, the super elite, or the Blackpool Combat Club. Take your pick. Um. I, I kind of lean towards the Blackpool Combat Club as long as Moxley is no longer champion. One of those three. The mailbag, I think we're going to just go with the simple email address, dontony at dontony.com. I'm going to see if I have like a mail at dontony.com. That email may work also, but for now, you could use dontony at dontony.com. I think what we'll do is every other week or maybe once a month, we'll do a real deep mailbag. I, I can't see waiting four weeks, though. Maybe we'll do every two or three weeks. We'll do a mailbag episode. I'll take everybody's mail, and um, we'll sort it out, and we'll do it. But I promise you I will not do like uh, Cornet. You will not hear me say, uh, Charlie Conway sent an email to Don Tony at DonTony.com. He asks, and... Mike T sent an email to Don Tony at DonTony.com and Benjamin sent an email. All right, you get the picture. Everyone, if you enjoyed tonight's show, hit that like button. If you know anyone out there that would be stupid enough to like this channel, let them know about it as well. And uh, I thank you as always for the support. Much appreciated. Thank you for always making these fun. You know, that has been my goal for a long time now. Fun. Having a good time. Just, you know, giving everybody a little bit of an escape with all this crap going on in the world. And, uh, you know, I think we accomplished that in some way. But uh, if you're around tomorrow night, join me at 11.05. Shout out to Synapse2K. Synapse2K, I hope I said that right. Thank you, as always, for the support, my friend. Much love. I know it will pop up on the screen. So, um. So enjoy Raw tomorrow. We'll see what transpires. We will be two weeks away from Cena, and we will also be less than three weeks away from Money in the Bank. So expect some storyline progression tomorrow, and uh should be a good show. I hope it's a good show, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you, Sam, for the kind words. All right, everybody, be well. Good night, and I hope to see you tomorrow. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? 
Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup, and I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.